everybody. My name is Matthew Brewis. Uh, when I was in the sixth grade, I had an algebra teacher who loved to teach business. Every class, all she would do is teach us how to market, how to make logos, and basically just how to make a product. This is all she would teach us in class. However, we were taught on the basics of algebra, which is kind of odd because we were never taught any algebra in that actual class. And she would also rarely give homework. And when she did, she would never go over it. So our only source to actually learn from was a Khan Academy, which if you don't know, that's an online resource used to help educate students. With this said, the highest grade at the end of the year in her class was a 79%. I know this because she posted up every single grade at the end of the year so you could see how well you were doing next to your fellow students. Throughout that year, I started developing these weird symptoms of nausea, anxiety, and then the night before the test, I just could not sleep. So, with that said, I started to believe that the root of my anxiety was caused from my sixth grade algebra class, and it later led to my test anxiety. Fast forward to high school, and I, the problems I faced in middle school had now intensified. Um, my test scores had gone downhill, and I, to follow that up, I took a psychology class that I thought would end up helping me, which in turn, it actually did end up helping me. Um, I learned about this association called Anxiety and Depression Association of America, which stated that 18% of students experience high test anxiety, while 18% well, report moderate test anxiety. If you did not know, test anxiety, according to uh, Kendra Cherry of Very Well Mind, states that test anxiety is a psychological condition in which people experience extreme distress in testing situations. After learning about test anxiety, it hit me. I realized I had actually developed test anxiety at this point. This was caused from studying for hours and receiving poor test results. I researched what causes test anxiety and what I could do to help deal with it. And then it came to me. I realized that there are two factors that you need to understand, biological and mental factors. Once you understand this, you can find ways to overcome your test anxiety. But what are these biological and mental factors? Biological and mental factors, according to David White, are the non-social natural forces that influence a person. Those are the biological factors. They play a huge role in your test anxiety, because when your body is faced with a stressful situation, like taking a test, your body will release what many of you know as adrenaline, which is a hormone in your body caused by the adrenal glands. This hormone correlates with your body's natural instinct, fight or flight, which Webster Dictionary defines as a reaction to potentially harmful situations or stressful situations on your body. An example of this would be when you're, let's say you get in a fight at the school grounds. So basically your choice is either run away from that fight or you're gonna stand your ground and you're gonna fight that battle. Um, Kendra Cherry from Very Well Mind says that some symptoms of these biological factors for test anxiety include, but they are not limited to, sweating, nausea, and shaking hands. Uh, it can also increase the amount of stress a student feels before or during a test. These, bio these biological factors play a monumental role in your test anxiety, but mental factors play a role just as crucial. Mental factors, according to Jasmine Chen of BuddhistStore.net, are feelings, perceptions, and mental cognitions that appear in your mind. This means that mental factors are issues revolving through your thought process during a test. For example, procrastination is a big mental factor that I'm sure we've all experienced before. Have you ever just had to do something and you just said, man, I could either do this now or wait later. I think I'm gonna watch Netflix instead because that's what I do half the time. And these, uh, these mental factors affect us greatly. If a student believes that they will perform poorly on a test, the likelihood of them performing poorly increases and that can be said vice versa. If a student believes that they will perform well, that means that they will actually perform well. Another mental factor that would basically hinder a student is uh, the anticipation of taking an examination. In a way, it's like the night before Christmas. You're so, you're so anxious to receive presents and tear them open that you cannot sleep. The same can be said about test anxiety. In this situation, however, you're so worried about taking that test that you're unable to sleep, you can't eat, and you can't focus on daily tasks that would you normally be able to do. 
Another problem caused by these mental factors is something called the vicious cycle, which according to Kendra Cherry, a very well mind, occurs when a student believes that they fail the test, they will fail the next test based on the prior results of that examination. I remember the time I had to take a final for my world history class. I was required to memorize 185 countries and their location on the map. Now that's a lot of countries, so I was extremely stressed out, and I remember that stress vividly. So, with that said, I had to try to figure out a way to study these countries and get to do well on the test. So I told myself, do not try to be perfect. These six words helped lower my test anxiety and even helped me overcome many problems I had with studying. I could finally hear myself think, and I could, fit, and I could imagine pieces of a puzzle matched together and help me study the math. Test time came, and I performed very well on the test. I believe I got 165 countries right out of 155, and I was just basically guessing tests after the original 155. But uh, I was beyond pleased with these results, and after discovering my grade, I went online to figure out why my test grade now was so much more different than the test grade I had received in the past. And according to uh, Kendra Cherry again, an individual needs to prepare for an examination get enough sleep, banish negative thoughts, take deep breaths, and avoid the perfectionist trap. These are all things you need to do in order to achieve better grades and overcome test anxiety. I also discovered through personal experience that exercising in the morning and at night can drastically improve your chances of improving grades. With all this said, test anxiety is a huge factor in how well you can perform academically. It can cause you to perform poorly on examinations and lose faith in your own abilities. To overcome test anxiety, you need to have a detailed understanding of biological and mental factors that play a role, that play a crucial role in your everyday life. You also need to stay healthy, both physically and mentally, while also banishing any negative thoughts. Doing this will help you achieve your peak performance as a student and help you crush your test anxiety. And I believe that Dan Millman, an American author, said it best when he said, you don't have to control your thoughts, you just can't let them control you. Thank you.